to EC Electronics. This is a video on ISRO Scientist Electronic Post Preparation. And we are seeing the questions from previous years uh, which have been asked in the ISRO Scientist exam. And today we are going to see the questions from analog circuits. Okay, so let's see what is the first question. The figure below shows the transfer cara of dash. So this is a transfer cara and uh, which circuits transfer cara is this? Option A, peak clipper. Option B, bottom clipper. Option C, clamper. Option D, two level clipper. So it is actually a very simple question. If you observe the transfer characteristics or cara, you can see that the peak of this cara is being clipped off or it is a it is a parallel line. Okay, so this depict that this is a P clipper. Now, if it was a bottom clipper, it would have been like this. Okay, and here it will be a straight line for a bottom clipper. Okay, and if it was a two level clipper, that is a peak and a bottom clipper, then it would be like this. That is, this depict the peak clipping and this depict the the bottom or the uh, bottom level clipping. Okay, so the question, in the question they are asking uh, that is, what is this cara depicting or this cara represent which circuit? It is option A which is your peak clipper circuit. Okay, so from the transfer cara you can see that the peak is clipped off. So this is a peak clipper circuit. So the correct answer for this question is option A. Which of the following components are needed to generate 6 volt DC from 230 volt AC to operate a tape recorder? 1. Step down transformer. 2. Diodes. 3. Resistor and capacitor. 4. 3. Pin voltage stabilizer. And out of these 4 components, which of all are needed? Option A. 1, 2 and 3. That is step down uh, transformer, diode and resistor and capacitor. Option B, 1 and 4, that is step down transformer and 3 pin voltage stabilizer. Option C, 3 and 4, that is resistors and capacitor and 3 pin voltage stabilizer. And option D, all of this. So, we are going to uh, convert, that is we are going to actually generate a 6 volt DC from a 230 volt AC, right. So, one thing is uh, sure that we are going to reduce the voltage, that is from 230 volt to we are going to reduce the voltage as 6 volt. So, so anyway, we need a step down transformer, right? Because we need to reduce the voltage from 230 volt to 6 volt, right? So, for that we need a what? We need a step down transformer. And in reverse, if we need to, if we need to increase the voltage means we need a step up transformer. So, that is the difference between step up and step down transformer. And diodes. Diodes are needed because we need to convert AC voltage to DC voltage. So we need actually a rectifier circuit to convert the alternating current to direct current. So we need 1 and 2 right. Now we know that uh, that is the output of a rectifier is always pulsating. So in order to stabilize or to filter this pulsating signal we need capacitors and resistors. So we need resistor and capacitor also. That is resistors will be acting as load and capacitor is used as a filter in uh, rectifiers. Okay. So, we also need resistor and capacitor. Again, we know that, that the question is that to operate a tape recorder, we are going to produce a 6 volt. So, uh, we know that the tape recorder need a stable signal. So, we also need a 3 pin voltage stabilizer. So, for converting 230 volt AC to 6 volt DC and to operate a tape recorder, we need all of this. That is, to reduce a voltage, we need a step down transformer. To rectify the, that is from AC to DC to generate DC, we need diodes. And also for filtering the uh, signal or the, uh, the output, we need resistors and capacitors. And also we need a stable signal. For that, we need a stabilizer. So, we need all these 1, 2, 3 and 4 for this purpose. And the correct option here is your option D. That is, we need 1, 2, 3 and 4. Okay. So, the correct answer for this question is option D. So, let's see what's the next question. The next question is, which of the following are the features of JFET? High input resistance, good thermal stability, high current gain, 
मोर नोइसी देन बीजेटी एंड द ऑप्शन आर वन एंड थ्री ऑप्शन बी वन एंड टू ऑप्शन सी टू एंड थ्री ऑप्शन डी थ्री एंड फोर सो इफ यू सी द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ ए जे फेट दैट इज अ जंक्शन फील्ड इफेक्ट ट्रांसिस्टम यू कैन सी दर इज अ सबस्ट्रेट दैट दिस बी एन एन सबस्ट्रेट देर आर टू पी रीजन्स डिफ्यूज्ड there is a drain there is a source and there is a gate so and these two p regions are combined and we get the gate okay so this is the gate bias so this is a general structure of a j effect or junction field effect transistor so this is having a n substrate or an n channel okay so here if you see the gate uh, source junction or the gate is is normally reverse bias okay so since the gate is a reverse biased so there is no current flow into the gate in the initial conditions and hence the input resistance of the jfet is very high since the gate is reverse biased the current flow is approximately equal to zero when the uh, gate is turned off that is since the gate is reverse biased there is no current flow or the current is zero and hence the input resistance is very high okay and also the relationship between the a uh, mobility of the carriers that is mu and the temperature coefficient or the temperature is mu proportional to t raised to minus f so there is a inverse relationship between the mobility of the carriers and the temperature so there will be some thermally generated carriers in the j effect but the mobility of this carriers is inversely proportional to the temperature in the case of a j effect so we can say that the jfet is having a good thermal stability also okay so you are option 1 is correct that is option 1 which is high input resistance is correct and also option 2 is also correct now option is high current gain if you see the jfet it is having a small gain to bandwidth product that is gain bandwidth product of your jfet is very less as compared to bjt and other transistors so the gain high current gain is a wrong option and also the fourth option is more noisy than bjt we know that in bjt there are minority carriers and majority carriers and the current flow uh, or the current total current is a sum of this minority current and the majority current whereas in jfet we cannot see any minority carriers so the current flow is only due to the majority carriers so due to the absence of these minority carriers the noise is comparatively less uh, less in case of a jfet okay so more noisy than jfet is also a wrong option so your option 1 and 2 are the correct options so the correct answer for this question is your option d which says that your option 1 and 2 are right in case of the features of a jfet or junction field effect transistor so the correct answer for this question is option b that is 1 and 2 question is if the circuit shown has to function as a clamping circuit which of these conditions are true for a sinusoidal signal of period t option a rc should be very much less than t option b r equal to 0.35t option c rc approximately equal to t and d rc should be very much greater than t actually uh, if a circuit has to function uh, like a clamping circuit what should uh, it do it should shift the level of your original signal that is it should shift the dc level of your original signal to uh, to clamp the signal actually so for that this capacitor has a major role that is the charging and the discharging of this capacitor actually uh, actually has the important role in clamping a signal that is the time of discharging of this capacitor clamps the signal so if the capacitor discharges very fast then the clamping will not be proper so for the uh, circuit to act as a clamping circuit means the capacitor should act like a battery
okay so for that what this capacitor should do is it should discharge slowly that is the discharging rate of the capacitor should be very slow during the time when the the diode is not conducting okay so that if the capacitor is discharging slowly means then the clamping level is achieved so that is the requirement for a clamping circuit okay so in order to make the capacitor discharge slowly what should be the condition is that the rc constant of the capacitor should be very much greater than that of the time period t of the signal okay so only if the capacitor is uh, discharging very slowly the required clamp level is achieved so if this is the original signal and if you want to clamp the signal means the signal level should be shifted right okay so for this purpose what we need to do is we need to make the capacitor discharge very slowly that is it should be the rate of discharge time or the time period should be greater than that of the period of the signal okay so we are choosing the rc should be very much greater than that of the time period of the signal only then the required clamp level is achieved okay so this is actually the basic thing or the basic criteria for a clamping circuit okay so this is how you have to design a clamping circuit and the clamping is actually depending on your discharge of the capacitor or it is mainly concentrating on your capacitor in the circuit and this capacitor's discharge rate should be very slow okay so for this question the correct answer is your option d that is your rc constant or rc should be very much greater than that of the time period of your sinusoidal signal these are the questions which i have included in this video in this video we have seen the questions from the analog circuit subject and we will see uh, in the next video with some more questions from the analog circuit we are doing videos on isro scientist technical assistant and for also the main core subject of electronics and also for gate 2020 so if you want to see any of these videos please do subscribe to the channel and if you like this video please do give it a thumbs up and also do share this video with your friends so thanks for watching and keep on watching